ChatGPT is a great tool for learning new topics very quickly. Whether you want to learn a new language, learn more about geography, world history, website design, coding, whatever it may be, ChatGPT has you covered. Let me dive into my step-by-step -step learning process I use in ChatGPT in order to learn new skills or new topics 10 times faster. Now for ultimate learning speed, using the Feynman technique is the best way to go. I've made my own variation of the Feynman technique and it involves five steps. Step number one, obviously, is selecting a skill or topic to learn. So what is the main subject or skill that you are trying to master quickly? And again, this doesn't have to be just so you can master it quickly, but just a skill that you want to become more knowledgeable on or a topic that you want to learn more about. Step number two is finding key concepts of the topic or skill. We are going to use ChatGPT in order to do that. We're going to start from an overhead view and go super in depth on that topic. And then we're going to break it down into the key concepts that are important to remember. Now, step number three is really what makes the Feynman technique the Feynman technique. And that is the idea that when you are learning these new things, you can retain the information very good by explaining that information to a child. But here's my little twist. In this variation, we are going to be the child and ChatGPT is going to explain it to us like a child. This is going to help us remember complex concepts or certain tasks that we have to complete in a very, very simple manner. And after ChatGPT has explained all of those key concepts to us as a child, we are then going to mind map our ideas and we are going to connect the complex concepts with the childlike concepts so we can draw parallels and easily remember our skill or topic that we are trying to learn. Finally, step number five is we are going to have ChatGPT generate us some action steps. So what can we do to further our understanding or learning on the specific skill or subject? What are some tasks we can do or some items we can complete in order to learn this better? Because actually utilizing what you're learning is a great way to retain that knowledge. Now, throughout this entire process, we are also going to be using something in the background called metacognition. And metacognition sounds like a big fancy word, but you can just think of it as self-reflection. So asking yourself questions throughout the process is really going to help you understand your why, and also it's going to help you analyze how you're doing along the way. If you wanna learn really in depth what is ChatGPT and how to use it, whether you're new to ChatGPT or you wanna learn how to better leverage this tool, then consider purchasing my ChatGPT mastery course using the link in the description or the top pinned comment. You'll get access to 25 plus private modules and a supportive interactive community to help you along the way. And this is lifetime access. So you're not only investing in yourself now, but also in the future of the group. With that being said, let me dive into my step-by-step -step process for learning new skills and topics 10 times faster with ChatGPT. So you may already know what you want to learn and that is great. Let's say I want to learn what is the complexity theory within business. Now, hence the name, this is a very complex theory, there's a lot of moving parts, and it's very hard to understand even when I'm just reading things on Google or trying to research it myself. So let's use ChatGPT in order to help us. Now that I've selected my skill or topic I wanna to learn, I'm going to go ahead and answer all four of these questions in the metacognition phase. So before learning or problem solving, I need to answer these four questions. What do I already know about this topic or problem? So if you don't know anything, that's okay. You don't know anything. What are my learning goals or what am I trying to solve? So this is important. You need to have a why into what you're doing. Otherwise it will make it very difficult to learn and it will just get on your nerves trying to learn some complex topics or skills. The third question I need to answer is what strategies or approaches should I use to learn this material or solve this problem? And if you're watching this video, well, you can use this strategy and you have an answer for free right there. And question number four, how much time do I want to allocate to this task? So it's important to set up a deadline and kind of a time frame for how long do you want this topic or skill to take in order for you to get a good grasp or understanding. Now, if you use this method, it should take under an hour depending on how deep you want to go. Now, if you're learning something very advanced like coding, you can really learn the basics doing this topic, but obviously you'll need to go more in depth and code projects and there's a lot bigger of a learning curve, but this is a great start for getting your foot in the door. So once again, I'm trying to learn in depth what the complexity theory in business is all about. And before we start this video, right now I know nothing about the complexity theory in business. I wanted to share this topic because I don't know a thing about it. So I'm going to be learning as I'm doing this. So now I'm going to get into answering these four self-reflection questions. 
Okay, so now I've answered all of my questions. What do I already know? Nothing. What are my learning goals? I'm trying to further my understanding with business topics. What strategy should I use? I'm going to use my variation of the Feynman technique. How much time do I want to allocate? Less than one hour. So now we are ready to dive into ChatGPT and actually get the ball rolling when it comes to learning about this new skill or topic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use GPT-4 and GPT-4 is the paid version of ChatGPT. You get a little bit more advanced reasoning and it's not necessary, but I do believe it provides some better responses when diving into more complex topics or when your answers require a bit more reasoning. What I've done is I've wrote my first prompt when it comes to learning this new skill or topic. And I recommend using a similar format when you're trying to get an overview of the key concepts. So I say, I need help understanding a topic. The topic is the complexity theory in business. Write an in-depth explanation of what the complexity theory is within business. So I'm kind of restating my problem. I tell ChatGPT I need help understanding a topic and then I give what the topic is. And what I'm trying to do with this answer is I'm just trying to generate a ton of important knowledge and later we are going to break it down into the key concepts. But first I want ChatGPT to write an in-depth explanation of what my topic or skill is that I'm trying to learn. So I'm going to send that off. As you can see, it goes on and on about the complexity theory in business. It uses very big verbiage and the vocabulary is hard to understand. The concepts are hard to understand when it's wrote out like this. And it does give a lot of good information, but it's tough to learn from. So what I can first do is read through this and try my best to understand what the complexity theory in business entails. And although it might be hard, I'm going to read through this and really try to grasp the idea before I move on to the next step of part two. Okay, I've read through it and I've got to say I'm kind of understanding it, but it still doesn't really make much sense to me. Um, maybe I am just not reading it good enough, but... Why try to struggle and read through complex verbiage and different articles searching on Google? Don't struggle in doing all of that. Instead, now that we have this complex piece of text in here that we've generated from a prompt on the complexity theory, what we can do is we can break this down into key points in order to help us better retain that information. So what we're going to do now in order to make this information a little bit more digestible is we are going to say, what are the key concepts I should understand about the complexity theory? I'm going to add in business. Then I say, break this down into three main concepts and briefly summarize each one. So instead of having this long paragraph of information, we're going to break it down into three concepts and this will be a little bit more manageable as we learn this new skill or topic. Now it gives us something that actually fits on the computer screen. It has three main concepts. So already I'm starting to look at this and I'm starting to understand it a little bit more, even just by reading the headers. And then it gives us a nice little summary rather than all of this information that's hard to consume. Now that you have your three main concepts of your skill or topic that you are trying to learn, what you can do now is you can actually explain this to a child but instead of you physically explaining it to a child, we are going to be the child and we're going to have ChatGPT explain it to us in order for us to better understand what we are trying to learn. This helps immensely when it comes to complex skills or topics in ChatGPT. It's also important to mention that all of this is happening within the same chat thread. We're not hitting new chat for any of this. It's important that we stay in the same chat thread so ChatGPT knows what we are talking about when we are asking it follow-up questions or giving it follow-up commands. So now this is probably the most powerful part of the learning experience, whether you're learning a new skill or a new topic, and that is explaining this to a child. So I restate what we have. Now that we have our three main concepts of the complexity theory in business, explain these three main ideas to a child. And ChatGPT does a wonderful job at breaking it down, making this stuff so much easier to understand. I'm going to send it off and boom, just like that, ChatGPT has this stuff explained in a way that I can now fully understand it. And even if we start to understand these key concepts up here and we can digest the information and we know what it means, adding this childlike explanation can really help us retain that knowledge because this is something memorable. For example, let's take a look at the first key concept of the complexity theory in business, nonlinearity and the butterfly effect. It's going to be much more memorable reading this story about playing with a line of dominoes and thinking about this as when you knock a domino over, all of the other ones follow. That will be much easier to understand and retain rather than just reading this big paragraph explaining exactly what it is with no story or visualization. So boom, just like that, we have our explanation to a child 
for all of the main concepts of the complexity theory in business. So we can really start to tie these together. And now we can go into actually mind mapping these and connecting them together with the more complex ideas. So right now we've finished step one, we've selected our skill or topic we want to learn. We've also finished step two, we found the key concepts of each topic or skill, and we just got done doing step three, which was explaining the concepts to a child, which in this situation, we were the child getting the concepts explained to us in order to make it more memorable and to experience visualization. Step number four now is mind mapping our ideas. Let me show you how I do that. You can use a free tool like this, Miro.com, in order to create mind maps. I'm on the free version and it's just a virtual whiteboard. You can scroll around. It's pretty much an unlimited canvas. And what I can do is I can actually add a mind map. I'm going to select mind map and now I'm just going to place it down. Here, this will allow me to type something. So what is it that I'm trying to learn? Well, I'm trying to learn the complexity theory in business. Now that we have the complexity theory in business, I'm going to bold it. This is our main idea and everything else stems off of that. What I want to stem off of this is the three main concepts that we generated within step two. You can generate as many key concepts as you want for your topic or skill, but I'm just going to stick to doing these three and we are going to hit this plus button and add all three of those concepts to complexity theory in business. Now this is kind of like a note taking step. You'll be able to really visualize how everything connects. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to select this plus button three times. And now I have three different colored lines. I can change the color of those lines if I'd like by selecting that box and doing something like this, or you can keep them all different. It doesn't really matter. But now I'm going to go in here and within each of these topics here, I'm going to list the main concepts. So for example, we have the main concept one right here and I'm going to paste it up there. So now we have a nice title right there and I'm going to do the same for the other two. And now we have all three of our main concepts in here of the complexity theory in business or whatever topic you're trying to learn about. Next, what I like to do is I like to list the complex definition under each one of these headers. So we're going to go back here and we're going to go back to the original key concepts section where we listed the three concepts without explaining it to a child. So these are the more complex definitions. And with each of these, I'm going to go another line down and we're going to have the explain it to a child version beneath here. So right now we're kind of just laying everything out in the open so we can get an overhead view of everything we've learned so far, broken down into more simple steps. So now I have listed all of my complex definitions and I know what the technical way to explain this is, but in order for us to remember how these actually work rather than just to remember the verbiage of each of these concepts, Let's add our childlike stories to the bottom of each of these. I'm going to go down to what I got in ChatGPT and I'm going to hit Control C. I'm going to head back over to my whiteboard, hit this plus button and hit Control V. So this is like a miniature explanation of what this means. And this is very good to just have as an overview so you can reference back to it later when you're trying to remember what you learned or trying to explain it to somebody else. And if you can do this on a paper and pencil, that would help you retain the knowledge even better because you're writing it down rather than just doing a copy and paste. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to stick to the whiteboard so you can see an overhead view of what I'm doing. I'm going to hit this plus button again and hit control V. And now we have each miniature story underneath the technical definition. I'm going to do the last one for adaptation and evolution and we are going to hit the plus button and add it right there. We are doing great so far. And next we have to go on to the metacognition phase part two. So now that we've learned some information, we have to do the during self-reflection in order to make sure that we're understanding the topic or learning the skill that we want to learn. So we have some more questions here. Am I understanding this concept or making progress towards solving the problem? What parts of this topic or problem do I find challenging? the learning strategy I'm using effective? Should I adjust my approach based on my progress so far? So these are good questions to ask yourself before you get too deep into the weeds with this certain method or any other method that you are using. Now I'm going to go ahead and answer these questions, which I'll leave in the description down below if you'd like to follow along. So now I've answered all of these questions. Am I understanding this concept? Yes. What parts of this topic or problem do I find challenging? I find it difficult understanding the link from science to business. So the complexity theory I've realized is also used in science and mathematics and relating that to business and the link between those two is uh, quite difficult that I'm finding. So this might be something that I further research within ChatGPT and ask ChatGPT to explain that to me 
like a child. Is the strategy I'm using effective? Yes, I do believe this is an effective strategy. Should I adjust my approach? Not yet. Okay, so now we are ready to move on to step five, which is action steps. Now, action steps are a very important step in learning your new skill or topic. You need to practice what you've learned, and ChatGPT is going to help generate us activities or practices that we can do in order to further our understanding in the subject. So I'm going to stay in my same thread as I ask these questions, and I'm going to ask ChatGPT to generate me two action steps I can do for each of the key concepts that will help me better understand them. So what I've asked ChatGPT to do is generate me two action steps for each key concept that will help boost and retain my understanding of the complexity theory in business. So I'm restating what I am trying to understand or learn here just so ChatGPT can get reacclimated to that. Now I'm going to send it off and ChatGPT is going to generate me two action steps for each key concept. And now it gives me three action steps I can take to implement this within my own business in order to navigate the complex business environment. So this is very cool. For each of these steps, it gives me two things I can do in order to put it to work in real life. Let's say that you're learning coding, for example. These action steps could be in the form of creating miniature games or creating characters or something along those lines that requires basic forms of code. Website design could be a basic website project that ChatGPT wants you to do. Whatever you're trying to learn, ChatGPT is going to give you great action steps in order to help maintain and further your understanding within the subject. So now I'm going to head back over to my mind map here in Miro. And what I'm going to do is on each of these, I'm going to add the two action steps that I can take in order to better understand this. And if you don't want them to be action steps, what you can do instead of saying action steps is to say, give me two activities for each key concept, and that will generate you more of an activity-like action step rather than actually implementing it into your life today. But implementation is a great way for learning. That's why I like using that word action steps within my prompt. Now, as you can see, we have this huge mind map here of information that we've learned, and now we can come back here and study this more in depth. We have these nice childlike descriptions that will help us retain that knowledge through a good visualization into what it actually means. We have action steps that we can apply today in order to help us learn this better and in order to help move the needle with whatever we're trying to learn for each of these categories here. Now that we have pretty much everything we need to know about the topic that I am currently learning, now we can go on to the last stage of self-reflection and answer those final questions. So was my approach effective? Why or why not? Maybe this technique wasn't the best for learning what you were trying to learn. And you can explain why this approach wasn't effective. And in the process of explaining why the approach wasn't effective, you'll notice that you are starting to learn more things about your topic. Question two, what did I learn from this process? Question three, how can I apply this knowledge or these skills in the future? What can I do differently next time to learn more effectively or solve similar problems more efficiently? So... Was there something you didn't like about this process? You can list it here. And this will just add on to your learning experience for the next skill or topic you learn. So I hope you learned a lot about ChatGPT in this video and how you can actually learn things very quickly while using ChatGPT. You can ask it to summarize things for you and it doesn't have to be the generated knowledge that you tell it to generate. But if you have an article you're struggling to understand, you could throw that in ChatGPT and do the same learning process. I've learned a lot of complex things using similar methods to this, but this is my refined version and what I would do if I was struggling to learn a new skill or topic within the future. Again, if you want to further your understanding into ChatGPT and you want to join a community of actively learning ChatGPT enthusiasts, click the link in the description or the top pinned comment where it says join this course and community and you will be brought to the checkout page where you can learn more about this course and community. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and drop a like. Also, leave me a comment below letting me know your feedback on my process for learning things within ChatGPT. Is there anything you think is unnecessary? Is there anything you would change or that you will change when using this in the future? Please let me know. I'd be happy to hear your feedback and implement it in my process. With that being said, I will see you in the next video.